Hey guys, KC Jilly. I'm out here at the secret garden working on the double greenhouse here stacked together, 40 foot long. And uh, I'm looking at, at uh, kind of laying out my irrigation in here today. I'm gonna use drip irrigation and misting. And I thought I'd show you guys some of the components that I'm using and how I'm gonna do it. And I, first I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna use. Okay, so let's check it out. As we come out of the faucet that I've got run over here, I still don't have water over here. I just want all this stuff set up and ready to go. Uh, you see this little filter housing here, this little filter assembly. Well water out here. And sometimes when the tank gets down, you will, it'll really fill up with sand. It starts sucking off the bottom, trying to fill the tank back up and it pressures up and all that sand will be caught in here. Look, it came with two free filters and the other one will surely last a year or two with, before anything happens there. It came with extra washers to put in there and even filters for that part if you want it. It's got some Teflon there if you want to use that. I don't think I need it because I've used the rubber hose and it should seal off. So, that's part one is our filter. All right, next I'm gonna put a timer. Now, I like these. I, I, these little rain birds, there's all kinds, all right? And I'm sure everybody likes theirs just fine. But what I specifically like about this one is that I get uh, two different cycles I can run. Two times a day, I can set it for any day of the week, however long I want to. And I, I find it very user-friendly. If you're interested in that setup, you can find it also on Amazon. Probably, if you're not in a small town like me, you can find it at your, at your hardware store, something like it. But this is how it comes from out of the box. It takes the two AA batteries. Now, depending on what's gonna happen here, most likely, I'm gonna use one of these babies. And I found that also on Amazon, but I, they have them here locally too. I just, this one actually was a little bit better built. So this is probably what's gonna be next. All right. Now, this will be my main line. I ordered this stuff. I think this one's about 50 feet long. This, these two greenhouses together are 40 foot long. Half inch, I don't know if I still got a sticker on the box. There we go. Let's see if I can get it. So, 52 feet of 16 so, millimeter hose. Good Chinese junk. Nothing I'd rather poke a hole in. All right. From, from that, that's going to be my main supply line, okay? Because there's no holes in that unless I put one in it. But it is going to feed all of these. These are the actual drip irrigation line here. They've got drip emitters built into them. Let's see if I can turn it where you can see a little better. I don't know if you can see that. That thing's got a little emitter built into it. And this particular... Uh, hose that I bought has an emitter every six inches. Now they make them with 12 inches and I'm sure further out if you want that. I have had the 12 inch and it worked great. But when I wasn't growing something bigger like tomatoes or something and I it was winter time and I wanted to grow lettuce and stuff, the lettuce don't need a foot apart. I, I want to use the, all of my space to my utmost. So I like this little six inch spacing. Should I be growing a tomato and I don't want to use the middle one? Okay, I'll just skip on over to the next one. But if I'm, I'm growing little stuff and everything can grow really close together and pack in, then I've got the waters already there. I, I still don't feel like I'm wasting a whole lot of water. It's a hundred times better than the sprinkler setup I've done in the past, okay? And then the only other thing that's coming is the mister system. And this one is I guess life green, life e green or something. Another Amazon find. Okay, kind of tells you about every three foot you want to put in a meter. The line's already already here. All I've got to do stretch this thing. Oh, it's already built. See, I just got to kind of hook it up and, and uh, clamp it where I want it. And I will run this stuff when I get to that point. I'm not going to get to that today. Okay but it's gonna go up here and run down this center beam all the way down. And so when it gets 115 and 120 out here, it's not necessarily just gonna make miracles happen. 
but this place will get some mist and a little fine mist will help cool that air a little bit. At least that's my hopes. All right, so I've got all these extra little goodies from the last time I did it, but when you're building this stuff, you'll need these. Okay, you gotta have some kind of little poker hootus, something to poke a hole. There it is. This is mine, all right? And this, this main line, when I get ready to, to put a line on it, I'm gonna take this thing, if you'll look. See, it's got a point, and I'll punch it through there. And then, once there's a hole in that line, then this little barbed end will stab into that. And then I can screw this stuff. See, it's gonna slide over the end of that, and then this is gonna tighten down on it, right? This little green here. And I, that's how my lines are gonna come out with this setup. Every video I have watched on drip irrigation is uh, really pushing to use a pressure regulator which you would use before you started your drip line for sure, okay? Maybe even before the timer, it doesn't really matter, I don't guess, but somewhere in this process, before you get to your lines, you're gonna need a pressure regulator if you have pressure issues. And these, these things are rated for like 25 pounds or something, you know, max. And you think, oh man, I'm gonna blow them up or something, but I have not ran into that issue. In fact, when I put the pressure regulator on, in town, I couldn't get enough pressure to fill out my, my hoses when I ran them all the way down. The first few would water real good and I wasn't getting anything down there. And I took the pressure regulator off and I had plenty of water just fine. I didn't have any blowouts on the end. This may be a spot where I should use a pressure regulator, but I'm gonna start off assuming I do not. I don't have any over there at the other area of my secret garden where you guys have watched me all year long and I have zero issues, no pressure regulator, no issues with lines bursting or anything like that. So to each their own, that's why you would use it. I personally do not feel like I need it and I'm not gonna use it. Okay guys, I ran my main line. I'll let you see what's going on there. I started there and I will let you see, this is the part that I used as far as that goes. This end screws on the water hose. See, half inch compression to three quarter. FHT, it's got the filter in that end too, just in case you need it. And what happens is, is this line just shoves into, let's see if I can do it one handed, it just shoves into there. You push it in and twist until it gets all the way in as far as it'll go, and then tug back on it just a little bit and you're done. I mean, that's how easy that was. So I, I did that with that one and I have run him just kind of down the line, up the hill. See, this is another reason I will not be probably needing a pressure regulator. I need enough pressure to walk up these steps with me. It comes all the way down that side, across to here, and it, it ended here. Now, I could have just plugged it somehow, but what I've done here instead is it, this particular kit came with the valve, all right? And, and I will nail it down right here, but what's gonna happen is, at home, I have some more of this black line, okay? And I don't see any sense in stopping it here in case I need it further down later on. So, I'm leaving myself the option. That valve allows me to shut it off there for now, okay? But I'm gonna, gonna continue to run back down the edge of this side, and probably all the way down to there anyway maybe across depends on how much of this the leftover stuff i have i do not have it with me so it will be either later today or next time but here is my thought i want the water pushed all the way uphill and doing its thing uphill first i'll i'll put in all my lines in my little raised beds that i want to be able to plant and, and drip and soak the water in here and i want all this water up high to hit first Okay, then through that valve with that other line that I bring down, it'll come all the way down to here and I'll run back across, even though it seems a little unnecessary, and it kind of is, because I could cheat and just run off of here, you know, go this direction, but I don't want to do that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to bring it all the way back down off of that valve you saw and across, and then I'll run my stuff out of this. And this section, which is the lowest, will actually be the last to get water. So... That will ensure that 
these raised beds and stuff up here in the in the uh, opening of my greenhouse, my little walkway down, all that stuff will get water first that's up high. That's the plan anyway. So for now, let me get back at it and see if I can't put some more lines out and we'll go from there. What I've decided, because I, of course I don't have all my goodies with me, I thought I did, but I don't. And I only have seven of these, which is gonna allow me, I'm gonna take this punch and I'm gonna punch a hole right here in this main line. Then I'm going to stick this into that hole and I'm gonna put this line onto this, okay? And I'm gonna have three lines across here running all the way down. For right now, I've just went ahead and ran it out and I wanna show you how I do the ends of them, okay? So I, to clamp the ends of this off so they do not continue to spray, I want you to look again here at this thing close, okay? So you see this is a little wider on this end than if I turn it around, it's a little narrower. And I'm actually gonna begin going through the narrow end. This is what I have found that works the best for me. So this little thin stuff, I slide it through till it comes out the other side. I'm gonna fold it in half like so. Okay, so I folded it over now. I use my fingers to kind of squeeze it off so it's a nice clean line. Can you guys see what's going on there? See that? Okay, and now I'm going to pull it back through. Now that will clamp it, but I'm gonna fold this four or five times and let it pile up in here. And because it's tighter on this end, it won't pull through. But this is the gist of what's going on here. So that's how you use these things, if you were wondering. Okay guys, so I've got that kind of set up down there on the, uh, that end. Now I'm gonna get this end. I gotta take a peek here. All right, so. I'm gonna cut him right here. That makes me not waste anything and I've got a good reach there on everything I need. So, that guy's cut. Now, it's gonna go about right there. Just eyeballing it, lining it up. So, take my little punch. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me show you a little closer if I can. All right, can you guys see the little hole down there by my thumb? I'm hoping you can. That's where it's gonna go in. Now I'm gonna force that thing in there. Let's see what we can do here, right here. It's fixing to go into that little hole that I just punched. Okay guys, so this has now been stabbed into it. Pressed it in there, took a little wiggling work. If you can see this end, so flat, cheap feeling stuff, but golly, it works good. I'm gonna spread it open like that. I'm gonna slide it over the end here to the best of my ability. Let's see. You wanna get it up there as far as you can. All right, so that's about as far as I can get it there. And then this piece, will thread down onto it. And I want to tell you it's backwards threads. So normally it's righty tighty, lefty loosey. It's the opposite with these for some reason. So you're gonna go opposite, lefty loosey. You can see it grab a halt right there, so. All right. Okay. So besides some stakes, which I've been I have a few stakes left over from, uh, from past jobs and uh, also from this greenhouse came with several stakes to help pull the tent down and hold it down. I won't be needing them the way I'm setting it up. And so I'm just reusing all my old stakes and staking this stuff down. But as you can see, I got that guy ran all the way down. And I'm going to do that again for the rest of them. I'll show you what I got done today. So from our supply. Got the inline filter, I've got the timer, I've got the four-way splitter. I have run my main line that will feed up there. Let's see, I'll walk this way. I've run the main line, you can see it running along the wall. Use my little stakes to hold it still where I want it. 
see it running along there comes across and comes to right there and that's as far as the main line goes i've also ran the actual drip lines here for both raised beds so they're done I'm, I'm done with that all i need now is to continue from here i've got some more of that that uh half inch poly not the drip stuff but the actual main line i'm gonna run off of and i'm gonna run it all the way back down here just like it is on the other side and come back down get on ground level down here and what i'm wanting to do is run it right across here like so right back to it i don't i may even connect it back in i have a big circle that way i make sure everything's getting water but either way from here i will run more of these drip lines so to be continued come back tomorrow if i get a chance okay guys day two I found my, some scraps there at the house of some line. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I've got all these little leftovers from other projects at different points in time. And I'm gonna use all of them and piece them together and run off of that guy, that little valve over there. You see the green and the red, look like Christmas hat. Stick all of those scraps together with some of this stuff. And hopefully I've got enough just couplings and not just tees and such, so see what I can do and I'll let you check it out when I get it done. Things are changing on the fly as I'm doing this. So I'm trying to figure out what exactly I want to do. You know, you come in with a plan and you go to looking at things and you think about changing it up. And so one of the things that uh, has altered my decision is that I remembered that I had valves, little valve setups for my lines. I'll show you what I'm talking about and how I'm gonna do it now, I believe. So previously, I was using those because that's my old stuff that I had. And I knew I had bought these, but I couldn't find them. And I found them last night. So, where I'm at now is, is the ones of these that I've already put in, I'm going to pull them out and I'm going to put these in. Because that being able to, to turn off and turn on will save water when I'm not using an area. If I'm not using a certain drip line and I don't need it, I just cut it off with that little valve. So I'm gonna replace the ones that I've already done up there for those drip lines, okay? I did hook into this valve up here, like I said I was going to, and I came on down with my scraps, and I ran it along here. You can see where I'm gonna plant my valves now, and I am gonna do them this way. I'm going to do them from east to west instead of long strips from north to south like I initially did. I may do one over here, but I'm going to leave myself a little walkway over to my water hose right in here. I may fill it in with some of this good caliche like material here along the edge so I have somewhere to walk. Now what I also did, because I had the, enough stuff to do it, is I went ahead and I... I this piece that I've connected on, I ran it right back into the hose, but what I realized that I can do now by doing that is I can run everything on this side, all that upper stuff, I can run it on one side of that hose, and let's say something happened up here and I needed to work on it, but I still wanted to be able to water back down in here. Well, now that's on its own individual line, and all I have to do is shut off that valve and then if i shut that valve off everything down here is running on its own independent line if i leave it open the whole thing is is circulating not that that's necessary but it cannot hurt so i got a lot a lot of options here because i've got all these goodies i've been building up over time and a few that i bought recently and so my next step was going to be to put these in and replace those old ones but i believe first i am going to go ahead and i'm going to check out that drip line and see what i got to do to install it up here i'm going to run that dude all the way down that and the reason i'm choosing to do th that at this moment is because i'm going to need a ladder and if i have a bunch of drip lines run right here i'm going to pull them up with the ladder on accident and stuff so I'm just going to put my ladder in here, run my drip line, get it done, and then I can do this stuff with peace. So let me go get my ladder, and I'm going to get this drip line going.
Okay, so I made it uh, most of the way here. Made it a little bit, about halfway through this greenhouse, and that's enough, you know what I mean? From about right here, that way, I'm gonna have missed my, uh, where I've got my hose run from down here up to it at this moment. It's, it looks a little sloppy, but see, they started the misters probably, I don't know, 10 feet up the line, and so those I'll just have to twist to off. And I could always buy another one and add extension if I want to go further down there. But uh, a couple of things I want to, to go over with you. With the misting system, since it's not run like a sprinkler system, I, I'm going to want that thing to go off kind of intermediate during the day every, every so often. I've got a timer coming on the way that's made for this. And I've got a power supply already for it too. So all I'm waiting on is that timer, and then I have to run electricity, and the pole is way over there. See, if I can find a long extension cord, I'll run it over here and do it that route. While the rest of the garden may water once a day, right? We want it like a certain time of the day, maybe twice in the heat of the summer, soaking down. The misters, they, they need to be going off probably ever so, you know, least a couple maybe three or four times an hour anyway to kind of keep things in a little bit better shape at least that's what I, the way i feel about it every five minutes it'll run for 15 to 30 seconds and that's what i'm going to set up and when i get that timer in i'll show you guys that the other thing that i noticed while i was doing this is right here where the two greenhouses come together now i have the tents that go over this and it would need to come down in between at this moment. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna cut out the two end walls of each tent right here to go through. I was just gonna unzip the doors and build something up to it so I could roll up my door and I would just walk through both. But that may be a little bit of an issue up there with that line tied running straight on through. What I also am thinking about and it's probably maybe what I'm gonna do, I'm not sure yet, <laughs> the way my plans change, but I have uh, like a 25 foot wide, 100 foot long roll of this stuff, this uh, six mil plastic, it's made for greenhouses, that I can just put that thing over the whole thing and that'd be the way to go. I just don't have any windows in it. You know, the other's got the little Velcro windows and the doors, so I, might, I would have to build more onto it to allow ventilation in here. So I'm not sure yet. It's, it's just gonna, I'm gonna have to think about it for a little bit. But two issues that I ran into there. So my, my line's a little short. It's gonna work fine when I get my other timer in. And I gotta figure out what to do here. All right, so moving on, let's get this drip tape done now that that old ladder's out of the way. I ended up spacing them about two feet apart and I can plan on either side every six inches or keep it opposite sides of one another for space reason depending on what i need but i got a pretty good little run right here and i've left myself just enough room i can walk here i'll i'll fill in where you see my feet i'll probably fill in over to that first deal with just mulch or something on top so i can walk over it without any worries once i get everything planted i wanted to show you guys too before i buried it that right over here in the corner this is the lowest spot at the lowest end I put a little plug in there that I can just unscrew when it's freezing temperatures coming or I just need to flush it and I will be able to clean this thing out. So, I'm trying to be wise here. I, I do have this main line that's going up and feeding all my other end of things, but if for some reason I just wanted some more, something to come off of there, that's plenty doable. But I'm leaving myself a little walkways, what that amounts to, so. And depending on how much gets donated to me, I had some hay given to me. I'll throw this thing out and I will stack hay up against the back. That way I can plant in the hay too. And it'll kind of keep everything, it's in bales, little square bales. So that'll keep everything from washing on in here or at least back it up a little bit while it gets solid up here at ground level. And uh, the tarp that I've got is 25 feet wide so it should be enough that I can lay over the outside of these uh, berms I've built on all sides 
it's 100 foot long so i know i have plenty of length and uh that'll get me safely and i can bury the edges of the tarp i'll set up something to where i can raise them up if it gets hot and uh i'll build some windows if i need to whatever i gotta do i'm gonna figure it out but maybe some framing on the ends there so i can put a door and the uh, same thing down here because i'm gonna need some kind of fans exhaust and and uh if nothing else just some kind of a, a shutter or something that i can let air in and out i'd like to, to build something where i can buy those little wax ones that open on their own when it gets hot so we'll check it out this is where i'm at today though i've got everything set up good enough the way i want it i think 